So um, it's um, a topic that's so important to us, and we're very lucky to have um, Didi Nirmala with us um, to help us explore this topic. She's been on this path for decade upon decade and been in many, many, many different situations. Didi Nirmala is uh, the director of Gyan Sarova under Baba's guidance and also is the regional coordinator for Austro-Asia. That's just two titles, but there's many, many, many more um, committees, um, situations that she's involved in. And so she has a lot of experience of having to um, deal with many, many different situations, many different kinds of souls with many different kinds of sanskaras. <laughs> And so um, I'd like to kind of explore this topic Anne, and pull out of your wisdom. But I know she wants to start the topic herself and share a little bit, and then we'll pick up some questions. Om Shanti. I think the most common Maya these days is waste thoughts and waste feelings. Other Vices. We are able to recognize and control, but this is something which is not controlled by most of Brahmins. If we are powerful, we will not have waste thought. So to be powerful, we need to have powerful Amritvela. Purity. Faith in Bab Dada, drama and self. Follow all Mariadas. Having all relationship with one Baba. Economy of thoughts, words, actions. Concentration and solitude. That will help us to have powerful yoga and that will be able to control waste thoughts and waste feeling. Now what we need to do is to be, to avoid waste, we need to have Stable on drama. Past is past. So we need powerful break to our thoughts to stop past thoughts. Present we have to pay attention. Future, we should not be worried about. Whatever is going to happen will happen. And whatever will happen will be beneficial. Also, which thought is, if there is desire, an unfulfilled desire, then there is waste. So we need to have total disinterest in the old world. We have to follow Srimad, be positive. See positive in everything. Follow Mama Baba. 
have elevated company we should value our time thoughts money energy because sangam yug is the time when we are able to create fortune for 21 births we need to be totally detached and we should not look at others think about others or listen to others because more we are into gyan and yoga we will not be worried about others so as we pay attention to our thoughts naturally we will be able to avoid the waste we have to check whatever we are thinking is it necessary or is it waste and naturally if we have powerful full stop then we will be able to stop the wastage <laughs> did you normally you've given us the um complete package and um certainly if we followed everything that you said would be super powerful and um our life would go very very smoothly but we do know that we're not perfect because if we were perfect baba wouldn't need to come so he's come to salvage us after you know 63 births and some of the sanskaras have been operating since the copper age and they've gained momentum slowly slowly they've gained momentum and so um that has created a wound in the soul that sanskara and that wound is until it's healed and all the things that you're saying is methods to heal that but until that wound is healed it can be triggered at any moment by something someone says or something that you know a situation so here here's a soul i could include myself in this i'm not completely free um with a wound some kind of wound and a situation happens and suddenly that brings up feelings can be quite powerful feelings overwhelming feelings and that can take the form of about of waste thoughts for those of us who are not so along the journey as you are what do you remember those feelings for yourself or could you give some specific things that we might do when in a way we've been triggered main thing is whatever as i said is if you are stable on drama whatever happened was good <laughs> i cleared my karma with that soul so that's why if there was some karma with any soul naturally they will <coughs> they will hurt me and if i have cleared their karma i should be happy <laughs> because then i won't have to suffer in future if i cleared my karma i won't have to suffer in future so if we use the knowledge in a right way we will not be hurt hmm. and we will be able to heal the wound and not necessarily we should be more traumatized mm. so have i don't know if you ever had a wound <laughs> um because baba talks about you in the murlia as very pure but for those of us who may have a wound <laughs> um is there some 
kind of steps that we could take to with Baba to kind of heal heal it might be it might not exactly be like a wound but it might be like a strong that wounds become a strong sanskara or, or it might be that that wound makes us in certain situations become hopeless or um, disheartened that might be the wound it might not be necessarily feel like a trauma but it, it it's it, something exists still existing so is there some kind of steps that we can take with baba to heal that the wounds that are there what i need to have the relationship with baba as a surgeon because baba is surgeon and he can heal the wound and usually the method is use gyan and yoga because that's the i would say is a medicine for the wound more we are stable in gyan and yoga and i think recently baba says if you consider baba's hand on your head then everything will be okay you will be successful mm-hmm. because the thing is at that time rather than taking support of baba we are thinking what can i do to <laughs> take revenge so i should not take that responsibility of taking revenge but i should let baba heal me because i i i is and my 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 the other maya <laughs> more waste so let baba help me so rather taking everything responsibility on myself let baba heal my own have you ever used the subtle region um that like go to the subtle region even imagine like a hospital bed there lying down you know your heart's kind of broken or in pain and then baba's going to come like the the real surgeon you know the subtle surgeon Have you ever imagined it like that or have you used the subtle region in any way to help for baba to help you in some way i am done like that <laughs> because i didn't have anyone yeah you see <laughs> but those who have they can do that why not <laughs> it's very good method you will see that you are lying in such a region and baba is helping you yeah. in sakar brahma baba used to go to the patients who had real mm-hmm. sickness physical sickness give drishti put his hand on their head and used to heal them mm-hmm. and people used to feel so much vitalized by presence of brahma baba and his drishti because mm-hmm. in uh, like the world they have to before you can have surgery you, you have to be put to sleep don't you and i don't know is there kind of like a method that baba might use before he kind of goes in and pulls out that that deep sanskar is there is there something else that he has to do first do we have to be ready you know you have to sign something before you have surgery do we have to be ready you have to have anesthesia yeah before operation yeah you all know that doc- it was dr nirmala now didi nirmala but this is dr nirmala so she has a big experience of um being in hospitals <laughs> 
Actually, just um, jumping into, you know, you talked about Baba coming and um, healing pain and you yourself and many seniors have gone through and many um, of us have gone through different illnesses, had to, um, where there might be pain in the body or kind of a chronic situation that goes on for a long time and you have to deal with it. How have you personally taken help from Baba in those situations? What I do is when there is sickness, physical sickness, I leave it to the doctor who is treating me and Baba who can take me beyond pain because treatment can be sometimes very painful. And if I go beyond the body and remain in subtle region, there is no pain. And doctor will do their job. Can I just, I've practiced this at the dentist. I've practiced being, being so still in the point of light that the dentist has done work without giving me injection, but it wasn't serious. You know, it wasn't serious things, but I think we need to break this down a little bit of what you've just shared here, because this is quite phenomenal, that you might be going through a procedure physically that's quite painful, which is in itself quite scary for many people to know that they're going to have some kind of treatment that's going to be painful. That could bring up a, a lot of fear, a lot of waste in the terms of fear. But what you're talking about is it's almost like you leave that to that bit to the, the physical doctors and you are in a way transporting yourself to the subtle regions. So how do you, in say someone who's maybe not as experienced as you and they're, they're beginning to feel fear of the pain that they might have to go through and they're doing their best to remember Baba, but how do they transport themselves to the subtle region? and be up there while this is happening down there. <laughs> it's the practice we do, because Baba has given us this practice long ago, to take the mind from corporeal world to subtle region to incorporeal region, exercise. Give, keep mind under our control and take it in a second. Today Baba was saying, take your mind in second beyond everything. So that's what practice we have to do right from beginning, not just at the time of sickness, but if we practice all the time, then when it is needed, we can fly in a second to subtle region or in corporeal region. And do you feel that if you've made some effort to do that practice over a period of time to whatever capacity that you have, that at that time of need, Baba, maybe give some a little bit extra help? Have you seen, have you experienced that, that you got a little bit extra from Baba? Of course. Yeah. When we go and take support from Baba, Baba helps. And Baba says, I am ever ready to help you. You have to just come to me. Mm -hmm. You take one step, I'll take 100 steps. Mm -hmm. So that's really reassuring for everyone that, you know, no matter what you have to go through in life, particularly many of us deal with, with illness or something like that, that to know that there's seniors ahead of us who have actually used this method absolutely practically and they felt... Baba's presence, but there's a seems like there's a criteria for this that you have to do, be doing this practice on a regular basis, so that at those moments it can almost like kick in in a way, and Baba can can help. Um, 
So thank you for sharing your personal experience of that. So valuable for us. Another area that I think is worth looking at is, um, um, you know, we've looked at sort of waste, a little bit going beyond waste, but there's lots of waste that a soul can have about self-esteem and self-esteem, low self-esteem can trip into either I'm not good enough um, or self-esteem can trip into arrogance you know, even if someone's arrogant, it's still low self-esteem, but it's just got a different different form. So either of these, it's all low self-esteem. And of course, that can create a lot of waste in uh, a soul that they, maybe there's a situation, they feel I'm not worthy of this, I'm not good enough, all these things. What could you say to, and you may not have gone through this personally, you may, I may not, but what could you suggest to a soul that is going a little bit more to the lower level of low self-esteem? To have self-esteem. What we have to see, as Baba says in Morley, each and every Brahman is a special Brahman. Even if you don't have 35 virtues, you may have only one virtue, but still you are special because you have recognized Baba and you are following Baba's Srimad. So Baba saying you are special soul and there are hundreds of self-esteem points. Mm. What one has to do is take one point at a time. And for a few days have that awareness. I am master, almighty authority, or I am master, ocean of love, ocean of peace, ocean of happiness. All these titles. Baba has given us. Mm -hmm. And Baba says, I give you the strength provided. You remember me. So what we need to do is see our own speciality and not compare with others because that's our old sanskar of comparison and competition. Mm. which leads us to lack of self-esteem. Mm. Just see what speciality you have and increase your speciality by practicing that title for a few days. Mm. And have the faith in Baba that Baba will make me elevated. Just follow Srimad and I'm sure there will be self-respect and we will not be feeling bad about ourselves because we, we are special children of Baba. Baba has selected us as his children, wife, friend, every relationship. Mm. So I should feel that I am worthy, not feel I am not worthy. Feel that, yes, I can do with Baba's help and not feel that, oh, no, I'm no good, I don't experience this, others are experiencing volcanic yoga, or they are going in trance, and they are, yes. mm, they are more powerful and elevated. No, I am elevated. So having that awareness, you can have self-respect. Sometimes we used to have a game 
workshop, seven people, and six people will give me some speciality for myself. It's like the piece of paper you pass around, that kind of thing. Yeah. We used to have that workshop mm -hmm. so that you get positive feedback for yourself, which sometimes you don't realize yourself. Mm -hmm. Others can see you. Mm -hmm. I like this idea of um, taking a title for, you know, like a few days, because sometimes we think, hero actor that was the one that was, came up today hero actor and we we have it as a thought pattern and then it can be fly away but when we take it for a few days and really explore it what does it mean you know and as we explore it um and look at it from different angles then often we see that um there's lots of qualities like virtues and powers that are supporting that title. So if we say even take something like hero actor, and first maybe we have to visualize, start from where we're at and think about the hero actors that we, we knew as children or whatever. And then we start to think about, well, what is a hero actor in God's eyes? And what qualities would a hero actor have on the world stage? You know, they'd have to be, you know, a hero actor, they they've done something hasn't they you don't just become a hero actor they've helped save the world or they've they've done something they've been in, incredibly altruistic or they've uplifted so it, when we ex take one title and we explore it um sort of unpack it then it we can start resonating with what baba really means by that title because we might not be able to grasp hero actor but we might be able to understand what resilience is so is do you have a special favorite title that Baba gives? Do you have a few special ones that you keep in your pocket that you bring out, you know? Of course. <clears throat> because Baba used to call me Nirmalasha, spiritual doctor, straightforward, honest, etc. So, I, if anybody defames me, I say that's their view. <laughs> Baba knows me and Baba loves me. Baba gives me so many titles, so I don't care for what <laughs> their opinion is. Baba says, don't hear evil. Listen through one ear, take out through other. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, that's a, a really nice yukti, isn't it? It doesn't matter what human beings say, because God himself, in the Murli, <laughs> has um, said, but we don't all have that, you know, <laughs> that God has, many have had um, personal meetings, and uh, even some sitting here have had personal meetings where God has directly told them something, but many now, they haven't had personal meetings, so they're just going on the Murli, so um, what might be your suggestion for them is to maybe create a few favorite ones themselves and let Baba himself empower them with those. Would that be a method, do you think? Yeah, when you listen to Morley, don't think that whatever title Baba is giving for somebody else, <laughs> think it's for me. Morley is for me, title is for me, and have that spiritual intoxication. Brilliant, thank you. Another area is um, others, isn't it? You know, you know, in the beginning you shared all the methodology that we could have to be beyond waste, but we know that, you know, even being wherever situation you're placed um, to live or service, Maybe many go out to work, many are in family situations. So we're, all the time we're dealing with different souls and different, each soul is unique and has their unique package of sanskaras. And you yourself have had to deal with so many different souls. 
when you were regional coordinator of um, Australia, Australasia, you're dealing with souls of many different cultures there. So was there a way that uh, allowed you to deal with all these different souls with their different sanskaras? Would we stop for a minute and that gives us a chance? Shall I repeat the question? Yeah. So um, I think in the situation of others, we'll look at situations in a minute, but the, when dealing with others, you know, um, that's the area that maybe a waste can come up quite quickly. Um, many, wherever we live, wherever we do our service, that provides scenarios, but also... Um, maybe some go to work, some are in family situations. And I was um, thinking for yourself, as the regional coordinator for Austro-Asia, you were dealing with souls from quite diverse cultures. So they're all different um, kind of Sanskar sets. So how did you embrace all that? you know, um, in those years that you were looking after, still are, but looking after that region? Um, Shanti. So variety drama, variety sanskar. <laughs> so not allow the way thought why they are like this. Because when there is a spiritual love, 
for each and every one. You accept them as they are. And as an instrument, it's our duty to uplift them. So having that spiritual love, as today Baba was saying, that you should not have just love for Baba, but family. And if you have that spiritual love for the family, you accept them as they are. Mm. And there is that desire to uplift them. So not to see their weaknesses or defect, but have good wishes for everyone. And that helps us to be close to them and they will be close to us as well as Baba. Mm. So it's almost like your starting point is yourself. So, you know, spiritual love is about an energy that goes outwards, isn't it? It goes outwards for you as good wishes do. They they come from you outwards. It's not anything really about the pe those around you, the souls around you. It's about what you're doing, that energy, and that energy embraces everyone. But if that if that is not there, that spiritual love that is not coming from you outwards, then you're going to see all the differences. So it's the the cultivation of that spiritual love and good wishes that um, is going to help you in those situations. Um, has there been um, a method uh, or steps that you have kind of blessed yourself with um, that allows that spiritual love? What I always keep in mind that Baba is father, these are Baba's children, my brothers. And Baba has made me instrument. Whatever they are, Baba has accepted them. So I should accept them as they are. And listen to them, listen to their grievance, try to help them. And the thing has been, we had to listen to them once in a fortnight. They used to come and share their grievances. <laughs> So myself and Charlie, I used to listen to them. And I said, you know, they used to say, oh, you are trying to mold us in Indian mold. And I said, whatever Baba has trained me, I am trying to train them into that. So Srimad, Mariada, disciplines, etc. Baba trained us and I am trying to implement it. Mm. So I didn't take sorrow because I knew whatever I was doing was right according to Baba. Mm. If they want to follow, follow. If they don't want to follow, that's up to mm. them. Mm. So those who didn't want to follow Indian system, mm. ultimately they left. Mm. And, and those who wanted to follow, they carried on. Mm. So that was once upon a time, it started. 
but just here it's like mind. just to um interject if you don't mind is um but you were not seeing it as an Indian system. You were seeing it as Baba's Brahman, Brahman system. Baba's system. Brahman means, system. Yeah. So it, that way I think started in Germany and then came to Australia. Mm. <laughs> but as Baba says, there are some who live Gyan after being five, seven years in Gyan. And that's what happened in Australia. Mm. Asia, it was okay because they are used to follow mm. discipline and mariadas and being obedient and all. <laughs> <laughs> So the Australians, they've got more independence. Like many of us in, in the West, we've got, maybe that's a sanskara that, you know, has developed, isn't it? That we're independent. But there's quite a key that you said that um, it's about becoming an instrument. So you're, you're, you're losing your independence in that you become Baba's instrument. You know, that's a kind of big method there. Mm. Um, sometimes with people, maybe it's because of something from long ago past, a soul comes in front of you and um, they're not doing anything particularly wrong, but there's a feeling that comes up, very quite powerful feeling, and it's like their very presence is disturbing. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had this situation um, but people talk to me about it and I've had this experience. Um, and what would you suggest to do in that situation? It's almost like it's related to something long ago past. And maybe there's an account and that account now is coming, coming back, maybe after many births, coming back to be settled. But it brings up, maybe it hits the feelings from the past. Um, I don't know if you've had experience of this or what might be your suggestion in those situations. Thoughts and feelings go with each other. So if that is a feeling, to change the feeling from negative to positive, we have to start thinking positive. Then mm. that feeling will be positive. Mm. If we continue with negative feeling, then naturally it will disturb us. And we don't want to be disturbed. We want to be happy. So we should create positive thoughts, positive feeling, and gradually the vibration will change. Mm. It's a good point because sometimes the feeling is you don't want to be disturbed, so let me get out of that situation or move away from that, that person. If, I, if I'm not around them, then I, I don't get disturbed. But what you're suggesting is it's not about moving away from them, it's about changing your attitude, isn't it? Changing your whole thing. And it's maybe linked back to what you said before, that each, each soul is Baba's chosen child. They've got a speciality. So it's working with the things that you said before, rather than avoiding that, that situation or that person. I mean, just for myself, I notice that sometimes when even when you first meet someone, sometimes your heart is so open and you feel like this is Baba's child and you just embrace. It's like a feeling of embrace. And there's been times when it's almost like something inside you goes, uh-uh. It's almost like you know, but you'll end up living with that soul. You'll end up working with that soul. It's almost like drama will give you an opportunity to heal whatever was there. And, um, and then later you notice that once, that once that's been healed, you could be around that soul all day long and it wouldn't bother you. Have you ever had an experience like that? A soul that used to 
kind of push your buttons. And now it's so easy around them. Don't have to mention names though, but. <laughs> yeah. If we keep on positive and good feeling, vibration changes, their feeling also changes. Mm. It's like a dynamic, isn't it? If your input, your input to something, like your attitude changes, you've already changed the dynamic in that relationship. So therefore, the law is almost, is it a law? It will have to change. Yeah. My change is world change. <laughs> so, um, I don't know if you've ever had any complaints to Shiv Baba or Brahma Baba, but many souls sometimes come with a kind of like a waste kind of complaint to Baba. Baba, I didn't do the 14 years to pass here. I didn't have that chance. And now I'm so busy at work. How will I ever catch up? Or they might say, you know, I didn't meet you in the corporeal form. And now souls may be saying, I didn't even meet you in the aviat form. There can be kind of like a waste kind of thoughts towards God or, you know, I had one. It was like, Baba, why didn't you, you know, like Daddy Kamaka, you know, meet me when I was 14. I wasn't doing anything then, but you met me when I was like, you know, 31 years of age. Damage had already been done, you know. So we can have this kind of little bit of a complaint to Baba, to Baba, you know, like waste thoughts to God, you know. We think it's, you know, I don't know. Have you ever had a little complaint to Baba? What do you suggest to those of us who feel when is that? you are stable on drama, <laughs> you know, Whatever happens is beneficial. Your part in drama was to open late. <laughs> so it's all right. Last, <laughs> last can go fast and become first. Mm -hmm. So why not make effort and not waste my thought? I should not waste my thoughts. Mm -hmm. It was in drama that I didn't come in 1936. <laughs> you didn't have a thought about it. <laughs> so I never complained to Baba. I always said, thank you, Baba, whatever fortune you have given me, that I was not married before Gyan. At the age of 27, I came into Gyan not married, and my parents were cooperative, and Baba knew me, Baba loved me, Baba praised me, so I mm. see my fortune only mm. that I was ready made. Mm. I mean, some souls, you know, they, they, there's a kind of struggle when they come in, you know, they're in a kind of bondage, you know, the other members of the family aren't supportive, you know, um, but they, they keep going. So what would be your advice to a soul where, you know, they, it hasn't been so easy? They have to think that they have to be more powerful to overcome the situation. These are test papers. I have to pass. I have to be strong. Mm -hmm. So these problems will make me stronger. Mm -hmm. Just as unless you pass examination, you are not promoted. <laughs> so this is also exam for me to be promoted. Mm. Some of us can have um, some, I'm moving to a little bit of a topic. I think that's, that's probably the recipe for every situation, isn't it? This situation has come to grow me in some way, to bring out a quality, a power, a virtue, something. It's, it's, it's to make me powerful. We can slip into the waste of why is this happening to me? But when we, shift it to what can I learn from this 
um, it, it shifts everything. Have you been in a situation where you just had that thought, what have I got to learn for this? And you saw the situation differently. Can you think of an example? Yeah, because every situation is for us to learn something new. So when we learn something new, that is pleasure and intoxication that I learned this from this situation. Because mm. we are here to learn and mm. change. Mm. Learn and change, yes. That are the, our two aim. Learn spirituality and change from impure to pure. So it's time to change myself. Mm. And it's a good thing to kind of remember, isn't it, that my change is world change. That's my contribution. When I, when I change, <laughs> the world will change. I'm contributing, even if it's a little, isn't it? Even if it's a little change. Like I was about to say something and I think, no, Baba wouldn't want it like that. That is world change, isn't it? That's, I mean, Baba reminded us um, this morning that to, in, in a way he's saying, keep busy, get involved, isn't it? Get involved, um, use, because that's when you'll use your specialities, you'll use your talents, and that will stop the waste if you're busy. He said, busy is good. <laughs> But I wanted to um, ask you, Didi Nirmala, because obviously you've got a lot to manage. Even managing a place of this is a huge responsibility and many departments are coming to you and you've also got Austro-Asia and plus different committees. How do you manage uh, your time or what is going on internally inside you that allows you to be able to do this. There must be something that's going on because probably phones are ringing a lot, people come in, maybe with, you know, maybe with blessings, but maybe with complaints. So what's going on inside you that allows this to happen? I always uh, try to link with Baba and with clear mind to get the solution of whatever problems are. So my aim is to help everyone, whoever they are, and see that the situations are resolved in amiable way. Mm. So, you know, you just talked about um, learning to have that attitude of learning and growing and but is there you know you say you take support from baba in this situation is is it are you using silence power to be able to you know baba praised you for your purity is there how can you help us you know when we're suddenly in a situation where there's a lot going on a lot of people come in lots that got to get done we can go into overwhelm I think many of us can trip into that kind of feeling, but you're saying there's a different way that we can use Baba, silence, purity, Baba to help in the situation. Can you kind of break it down for us a bit more? Silence, Baba, and clear intellect. That will give me the solution of the problem. Because if my intellect is clean and clear, I can catch Baba's direction. Does he whisper to you? Does he? Is it like um, a feeling you get of doing the right? Or does he? Does he actually come in and say, "Do this, do that"? Does he? Does he actually do? Hear like a telepathic voice or something? It's a feeling. It's a feeling. What is right? What is wrong? Mm. So you sort of know which way to go based on that. It's like a pure, is it like a pure feeling? Or is it pure? Is it in power? Is it empowered feeling? Can you? Pure feeling. Mm, pure feeling. Good feeling. A good feeling. So you kind of know that's, that's the right thing. 
And have you ever had a situation where maybe you knew that you didn't quite give the right answer or you didn't quite go the right way and then you saw how Baba, Baba became the one who put right everything that went wrong. Have you had a situation of like that where, you know, we want it to go the best, but maybe it wasn't the right advice or something. And then Baba had to come in and shift it all. Have you seen that too? Yeah. Have you got an example or? <laughs> <laughs> no, Baba puts everything right when we leave it to Baba. Hmm. When I think I am doing, then Baba will say, okay, go, go ahead and do whatever you can do. But when there is Almighty doing, everything goes smoothly and successful. Mm. Because um, sometimes we have situations where, you know, afters we think maybe my, my attitude wasn't quite right or I could have done more or... And then my own experience um, is that I tell Baba that and somehow Baba sorts it out that that soul comes in front of me again and there's a chance to be more generous or something. Have you seen how Baba works to um, always set it right? He, always, he wants Baba wants all our accounts to be clear before we go home, doesn't he? He's, have you seen that? Yeah. He wants us to clear all accounts <laughs> through suffering or meditation. <laughs> so we have a choice. We have we got to clear our accounts anyway. So we can either do it through meditation and the methods that you you shared at the beginning, which is Baba's methods, isn't it? All the things that you shared, following Mariadas, Srimat, putting Baba in the front, all of these instrument consciousness. This is Baba's method. Or basically, you could, if you have any kind of waste thought, you're going to suffer, aren't you? You know, and the more you have waste about something, you're just increasing your suffering. So, you know, this is why Baba's mercy is, he says, stop the waste, isn't it? So, I mean, probably when, you know, time is now moving on, but probably every, every vice has its waste, doesn't it? You know, like if you look at attachment, there's going to be some waste thoughts around attachment. If you look at ego, there's going to be some, its own kind of waste around it. If you look at lust, and most of us are not looking at the kind of gross level of lust, but expectations and desires and wants and needs, and there's going to be a whole waste around that. So you can see how clever Baba is because he says, finish waste, clear out all the waste. But really, maybe what he's saying is you've got to sell all your accounts with all your, <laughs> with all these old um, vices. And once all of those are cleared, there will be no waste. So he's quite a clever teacher, don't you think? <laughs> is there anything last, we've got like two more minutes, is there anything that you'd like to share as a kind of final um, a kind of sharing. It might be even repeating some of the things from the beginning um, to end this being beyond waste and uh, waste thoughts and waste feelings. Any last thought? Main thing we need to have faith in Baba, drama, and ourself. And once we have that faith, everything will be smooth and success. Because it is said faithful intellect will bring success. Mm -hmm. So we want success and for that we need faith. Thank you. Thank you for sharing so profoundly on this, this topic and you've given us lots of food for thought and you know in a way as a summary you know you're shame that, that the more we follow the path that brahma baba followed and even those last three words isn't it incorporeal egoless viceless that is gonna really help us go beyond all waste so thank you so much for for sharing okay so we'll finish with dominus meditation yes. Thank you. 
झलक तुम्हारी यो प्यारे भगवान पलक में भर 